Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM has offered an update on the implementation of its transmission development plan. Terence Screamer joins me to talk about developments and the implications for industry and developers. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the TDP and what does it say? Well, every year since about 2010, uh, ESCOM has been bringing out this transmission development plan to give visibility to the market of the investments it needs to make in the grid. This year it didn't bring out a new document. Uh, it got an exemption from the regulator because there's a new integrated resource plan about to be published and those assumptions are used uh, and embedded in the, to the TDP. And anyway, the TDP that was published last year had to move beyond the IRP assumption, which we know were outdated from the very day that they were published. So, and it was looking beyond the 10-year horizon, which ended for the IRP in 2030 uh, to 2032, and uh, looking at what that meant for grid capacity. But basically, it shows that we need a massive scale-up in the investment in our transmission infrastructure. So this isn't the distribution infrastructure, but it does have implications lower down, uh, which is run by ESKIM as well as municipalities. This is the, the sort of high voltage lines, the big substations on the transmission grid. And we're looking at sort of 14,000 kilometers of new power lines that need to be added, hundreds and hundreds of large substations that need to be integrated uh, into, the, to the, into the grid over the next 10 year period or nine years in this case. So it's a, a very big investment. ESKIM doesn't put a figure to it, but we know that in the public domain, people are talking about between 200 and 300 billion rand of investment that's going to be required. And a lot of this is about adding new grid infrastructure in renewables potent areas. So the Northern Cape, the Eastern Cape, the Western Cape, where we know there, there are major constraints already showing through on the grid. There is some concern about the approach being taken to implement it. Yes, I think uh, the industry is particularly concerned about the shape of the investment profile. Well, previously it's been about funding. Is, does ESKIM have the funding? And is it really getting all the, the planning and the front-end engineering up, uh, in place? Uh, funding since the 254 billion bailout of earlier this year, the debt relief package, ESKIM has some sort of greater certainty around the funding for the next three to four years for grid planning. But that's in a context of a very slow ramp up in the rollout of grid infrastructure. So the sort of the peak, at peak, they're going to be needing to do 2,000 kilometers of uh, rollout every year. Last year, they only managed sort of 300 kilometers, which was already a bit of a, an uptick from previous years and they're going to dip down, for instance, in the current financial year in terms of how many kilometers they actually roll out. So it's very heavily back end loaded or what people call a hop hockey stick type shape. So it, it really ticks up in the later years where we start getting into the, the very much higher tempos. And there's almost a bit of a dearth of projects in, up front. And the industry, which we know has really been rocked by you know, COVID lockdowns, that's the construction industry, the big pullback on the infrastructure from public companies and private companies, but particularly the, the embedded state-owned companies. The fact that the access to sites is really difficult these days with construction mafia and all that, all the violence. So it's really been rocked and the capacity has been decimated. And they're saying with this sort of profile, there's going to be no industry you know, existing by the time we actually get to the, the tail end of the hockey stick or the uptick. And it's going to therefore all land up moving to foreign uh, and international companies to do that, who don't have a brilliant track record uh, on some of our sites, um, including transmission sites. And so there's a warning that this, this shape is not ideal and that uh, the stop-start nature uh, um, of the rollout, also on the substation side, doesn't give enough confidence for investment up front and Eskom's track record as well hasn't, doesn't give a lot of confidence. So there are concerns about the shape of this uh, plan. I think everyone knows that we need a lot of grid, but the shape of it and the capacity and whether it's, there's a trust deficit, I think, that remains uh, is a problem. 
How is ESCOM responding and is it enough? ESCOM is responding internally by saying, well, we've got, at last, we've got funding in place, funding visibility for the next three to four years. We've ramped up the amount of front-end engineering that we're doing internally on a number of projects. They're also saying that they realize they don't have enough capacity internally, so they're employing owners, engineers, to beef up their capacity. That's for the front-end uh, front design of these uh, projects. And they realize that they need to go to different contracting model, an EPC model, more and more, which they think will accelerate the process. So that's what they're doing internally. <coughs> um, these contracts for line, the line EPCs, and for the substation EPCs could be awarded early in the new year. Uh, the owner's engineer could be awarded this month. I think that will beef up some capacity. But if you look at the scale of investment, and Eskim, you know, uh, they're talking about trying to integrate 53 gigawatts of new, mostly wind and solar by 2032. The scale of the investment is really large. and even with the priority projects, so they've got 47 priority projects, a lot of them front-end loaded around sub existing substations, trying to get more capacity, sweat those assets more, expand around those substations. Even with that, I think it's going to be difficult, uh, difficult delivery. And therefore, there's, there's this whole other separate process which is being led outside by NICOM and by the electricity minister to see if we can't crowd in private sector skills, private sector finance, different delivery models, sort of build, operate and transfer. But at this stage, that's not baked into the plan. So one, it's got the socky stick shape. Two, there's capacity constraints within Eskim and there's a trust deficit. So there are these concerns and I don't think it's going to, be, I don't think Eskim alone is going to be able to deliver on the TDP, even as it is. And whatever the TDP that comes out next year, once we have the new integrated resource plan. But as I think we're going to have to consider different ways of adding grid capacity. There was also some news about unlocking grid connection capacity through curtailment. Yes, uh, there's a bit of frustration uh, amongst RPP developers that Eskim's very conservative approach to, to the way they allocate grid. Um, is now having real implications. So we saw it with bid Windows 6 where uh, if there had been a curtailment framework in place, most of those wind projects probably could have been shovels in the ground right now and we could have been expecting some of the electricity from that, probably some of it next year. But none of those projects passed muster because Eskom said it had been fully absorbed. They now have agreed uh, belatedly that curtailment is part of the way you manage the system and that they are going to it's going to be part of uh, optimizing the grid right into the future for always as all system operators do all around the world as i say esk has been very conservative of this and that's going to unlock about four gigawatts immediately particularly in the eastern cape and western cape which are we know are the sort of really wind potent pro pro uh, provinces and there is in terms of our rollout in terms of the current rp we, solar we're doing quite well because there's a lot of embedded solar coming into the system, rooftop solar, so we're almost matching that profile, but we're lagging the wind. So I think the fact that there's going to be this curtailment framework in place allows the next public procurement round to, to contract for wind. That wouldn't otherwise have been possible. But we have to wait and see because still the RPP office hasn't put out uh, the tender. It's delayed, I mean, it was supposed to be the middle of this year, then September, we're now you know, deep into November. So it's a real problem. And the Minister of Energy Electricity is saying it will be December, which is not ideal in the South African context. We know what happens in December, January, things really slow down, that the tender will be released. But the RPP office has given no firm date as to when they're gonna release this. The fact is the GCCA is now published, gives you some idea of where the 19 gigawatts uh, of capacity, connection capacity is in the country. They're saying there's nothing left in the Eastern Cape, Western Cape, Northern Cape, uh, Central Hydro region, but with curtailment, it does bring in some of that co uh, grid connection capacity. So hopefully that gives uh, the RPP office the confidence to move ahead. But I think they're going to want to have a firm resolution 
and uh, Eskom says they're going to publish an addendum to the GCCA, but they haven't done that yet. So I think until that's done, I don't think the IPP office is going to launch bid window seven. So instead of December, we might see that dipping into next year, but we'll have to see. There are, uh, there is still a month left in the business, in the calendar year. There's not much, they're not really a month left in the business calendar, as we know, as people prepare for the summer break. Thank you. That's the second tag show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.